apply for Birthright in May, was on a flight in June, and three days later on my way to the city of Gumri with complete strangers having no idea how to speak the language. I didn't really know what to think about Gumri at first, and honestly, they didn't know what to think of me either with my piercings and my tattoos. It was weird, all of it was weird. Eventually I got into a routine, and they got used to me, and from that point forward, it was nothing but love. You can ask anybody in the room, I'm obsessed with Gumri. We used to work during the week, went to Yerevan every weekend, stayed up all night, slept all day, excursions on Saturday. What wasn't to love about the whole experience? At that point, I was honestly ready to move to Armenia. With that being said, there was a lot of things coming into this that were a little bit different at first. And throughout my stay here, I kind of went through some things that kind of brought reality to the situation. Before, I was having conversations with taxi drivers talking about, America's not easy either. You work to barely survive, and if you're gonna struggle somewhere, why not struggle for Armenia? Well, I got an apartment in Gimri to try and learn a little bit of something, but I had no idea the lesson I was gonna learn from that. I watched my savings slowly deplete before my eyes. I started having different conversations with taxi drivers, asking them what life was really like for them here in Armenia. And when I understood that, I understood that coming to Armenia with foreign money is a completely different experience. Coming to Armenia as a tourist is a completely different experience than coming to Armenia and trying to live here. We went to Artsakh as one of our excursions, and there was a lot of things that we did that trip. We went to go visit an army base. We also went to go visit a museum that was for the fallen soldiers. And at this museum, all of the walls were covered with frames. And in those frames were young boys' faces. And because of everything we had experienced on this trip, towards the end, heading back to Yerevan, we stopped just as a bathroom break typical thing. And everyone was rushing off of the buses, getting their ice creams, going to the bathroom breaks, whatever, whatever. But because of what I was experiencing, I just stood off to the side to try and reflect on everything that I had just seen on that trip. But as I was standing there, I noticed a marshutka off into the distance. And marshutka is those little mini buses for transportation. And close to it were some people standing there. And I noticed that some of them were hugging and crying. And me being my curious self, I had to go closer and figure out what was going on. But as I stepped closer to see what was going on, I noticed a man standing there in uniform. And he was telling the families that they would be taking off soon. And as I stood there, that's when I really realized what I was watching. At that second, I saw fathers hugging their sons, giving them words of encouragement because they had done this before. I saw moms hugging their children that were yelling and crying for their older brothers that they wanted them to stay. And I saw boys trying to stay strong for their families as they filed onto the marshutka to be taken away. And 18 years of preparing themselves to go to the army was actually happening. And the strength that I saw in their face as the marshutka rolled away turned white, and they were gone. And at that second is when I realized by us telling people to stay in Armenia, and by us just sending money to Armenia, we don't really know the words that those, like we don't know the weight that those words carry. There's a lot of things that we're telling people because the money we send to Armenia doesn't guarantee those families that their sons get to come back. And the money we send to Armenia doesn't even guarantee those sons that the country that they just went to go fight for can even have a stable and comfortable life for them here. I had 15 students in Gyumri, and 11 out of those 15 students had fathers who worked in Russia. So that's 11 students who saw their fathers once a year. It's 11 wives who see their husbands once a year because the husbands think the only way to support their family is by going and working somewhere else. When we send money to Armenia, we're just hindering them the same way that the Soviet Union did by giving them everything. They don't have to be innovative. They don't have to be creative to come up with new ways because Armenia doesn't lack intelligence. Armenia doesn't lack resources. I found out a lot of things being in Armenia. I found out a lot of things about Armenia itself, but most importantly, I learned a lot about, about myself. I now speak Armenian. I now understand that there are things that I can do for Armenia. And I encourage everyone to come and volunteer in Armenia so that you can discover something that we can do as a community for our new Armenia. Duhov.